going to see how to solve a polynomial equation. Uh, and by polynomial equation, we mean uh, polynomial degree three or higher, right? We've already seen uh, a methodology for solving linear equations and for solving quadratic. Um, and those are technically polynomials, but these are techniques for higher order polynomials. And, and when you get to this stage, you're not guaranteed to be able to solve this analytically or by hand, um, but steps one and two represent the most common techniques that are used. And so they will work for the problems you encounter in this class and, and many problems of interest. Uh, and we'll either do step one or step two, not both. Uh, and the decision is based on uh, if the variable appears once or more than once. So we actually have two instructor models for this methodology uh, to show off steps one and two. Instructor model one, uh, we can see that the variable x only appears once right there. And so that means we will be using uh, step one. And so we'll follow these sub-steps a through d. So we start with step one a, isolate the variable factor. The variable factor is the four minus x cubed. And so in order to isolate that, we need to uh, get rid of this nine and then this three. So we get rid of the nine by subtracting nine from both sides. 9 minus 9 is 0, and 0 minus 9 is negative 9. And we'll get rid of this 3 by multiplying both sides by 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that's gone, and negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. Uh, and that isolates the variable factor, completing step 1. A. Next we take a root of both sides. The index of the root should match the exponent. So for exponent 2, you'd do a square root, exponent 3, cube root, that's what we have here, uh, exponent 4, fourth root, and so on. So for exponent 3, we'll do a cube root of both sides. So it looks just like a square root symbol, but you put uh, the index right there at the beginning, and that index should match the exponent that you're trying to remove. Uh, and so a cube root and a cube will cancel the way a square root and a square would cancel. Uh, and all we have over here now is 4 minus x. Now for doing uh, square roots and cube roots, we probably want to use a calculator for that. Uh, and on this one, uh, the cube root function is right above the exponent in blue there. So you have to hit the second button and then hit the exponent button. Um, Oh, and that, I guess you need to, sorry, you need to start with the index of the root. So for a cube root, we need to start by pressing a 3, then second, and then this exponent button to get the, and that 3 turned into the index there, so that's a cube root. Uh, and then we can put in a negative to 7, uh, and see that the result is negative 3. So that's taking the nth root of both sides. Uh, next, we need to stop and think whether we need a plus or minus. If you do an even index root, like a square root, you need to put a plus or minus on one side of the equation. Uh, we have an odd index root. 3 is an odd number, so we do not need this plus or minus. But if you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you need to put plus or minus. And the same goes for a fourth root a sixth root, or any even index root. That brings us to the last step in step one, and says 1d, isolate the variable. And so we would need to finish up by subtracting 4. 4 minus 4 is 0, and negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. And then uh, we can multiply or divide both sides by negative 1 to get x isolated as positive 7. So that's our solution, and again, you'd either do step one or two, so since we did step one, we're not going to do step two. That brings us to step three. You know, sometimes steps one and two don't work, and where you go from there is using technology to solve an equation. Uh, and so we introduced that here as a supplement to these two techniques, um, and, and a way to validate. Uh, I've got a link here. Uh, this is a piece of paper, so it's not going to work, but uh, you all have access to this same stuff. Um, 
So if you go in to D2L, uh, here's the methodology we're on. Uh, right below that is this link here to the Wolfram Equation Solver. It's also in the methodology document right here. You should be able to click or copy and paste that link. Uh, and that should bring you to this website here. Uh, and the first thing you want to do is delete that example that's there, plot inequality. So we don't want that. Um, and you do want to tell it to solve. Since you're solving an equation, say solve. And then type in the equation. Uh, again, our equation is 4 minus x, parentheses. And you can use these buttons for exponents and fractions if you want. Um, though, I guess I didn't set that up right. Uh, I would use shift 6 to get that uh, exponent and then put a 3 there. Uh, and then hit uh, forward slash to go to a fraction. So I could do that with the buttons, just in case you like the buttons more. Probably start with the fraction, and then in the fraction, click the exponent. And now put in your 4 minus x. 4 minus x. Uh, cubed over 3. Uh, and then plus 9 equals 0. And then you can hit enter or you can click the little equals button here. And Wolfram Alpha will solve this equation for you. Now check your input interpretation and make sure that you typed in what you wanted. It'll display it in more of a mathematical format. Uh, it has written the over 3 fraction as a 1 third out front. That's equivalent, so that's okay. Uh, and what we see out here, the results of the solutions, there's the seven that we found, and then here's two complex solutions that we did not find. And this will happen with higher order polynomials. Uh, we don't have the skills yet to find all the complex and imaginary solutions, so you may get some additional solutions here. Um, and, uh, and that's okay, we can still validate those. Um, so uh, this is our sort of answer for step three. You could write those three things um, back on our sheet. So we say x equals 7, and then I've already forgotten what they are. 1 half 5 plus or minus 3i squared of 3 of 5 minus 3i squared of 3. Is that right? So only difference, and these complex numbers will usually come up as complex pairs, uh, where the only difference is uh, the imaginary part is positive in one and negative in the other. All right, so that's what you do for step three, and then it brings us to our final step, which is step four. We want to validate our solution uh, set, so uh, we're going to check these three solutions, and uh, again, we do this with the calculator. Um, but it's good to write down what you're putting in uh, so we can see that. So I'm going to check in x equals 7. I'm going to replace x with 7 in the original equation. And then make sure that that gives me 0. So let's go to our calculator here. And uh, we'll start with a fraction. And then parentheses, 4 minus 7, close parentheses, exponent, 3, denominator, 3, plus 9. We just want to make sure that that gives us 0. And so we've checked that off. So 7 is a validated solution. Let's try one of these complex ones now. So we'll put that in four minus one half times five minus three i squared of three. Uh, three that's cubed plus nine. So let's type that in. Fraction four minus, and then I've got another fraction. 1 half 
parentheses, 5 minus 3. Uh, for i, so i is on the same button as pi and e, and if you press it once, you get pi, press it again, you get e, press it a third time, and it turns into an i. Uh, and square root is the second in the square button. So there's, get out of the square root, there is 1 half 5 minus 3i square root of 3, right? and then that is all cubed over 3 plus 9. And sometimes you'll get 0, uh, sometimes you get 0i. Zero uh, I mean, technically, 0 is equal to 0i, zero which is equal to 0 plus 0i. Zero um, so those are all ways of expressing 0, depending on if you're including imaginary numbers, real numbers, or thinking of it as complex. So uh, don't get worried by that 0i. That is equivalent to 0. 0 is 0, even if there's an i there. Uh, and so we'll indicate that that's checked off. Now, I don't have to retype that in for the last one, because the only difference in the last one is that it's 5 plus 3i square root of 3. So it's going to be a lot easier to type that in the calculator. Uh, so I'm just going to use the up arrow, get up there to what I already had, and then go in and edit this by changing that minus right there to a plus, and it should still give me zero. Yeah. All right, so we validated all three solutions. Now there's an extra thing here, which you might be thinking, well, how many solutions are you supposed to get? So the number of solutions you get in a polynomial equation cannot be more than the degree. So this was a degree 3 polynomial, right? And so we couldn't get more than 3. So if somehow I got 4 or 5 solutions, then I, in this validation step, I would stop and, and check and make sure that's right. Furthermore, the number of solutions should actually match up with the degree if you would take into account the multiplicities of the solutions. Now that's a little complicated of an issue. Um, here, since I have three solutions and the uh, degree of the polynomial equation is three, the multiplicity is one. Um, but if I just had one solution, it would need to be multiplicity three uh, in order for those things to match up. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as you look through the different examples. Uh, that the uh, solutions and their multiplicities should match up with the degree of the equation. Um, and then finally, we just write our solution set, and so we can put the 7 and then the 1 half 5 minus 3i squared 3, and then the 1 half 5 plus 3i squared 3. And we are done. Uh, but wait, there is another instructor model. Uh, so I wanted to show you how to do uh, step two in this process. So we've got another equation. So we've got 9x to the fourth minus 6x squared plus 1 equals 0. And you'll notice that the variable appears more than once, right? It appears twice there. And so we'll be using step two this time. And uh, step two is basically a factoring approach. So we're just going to be factoring... Uh, the polynomial expression. So you want to use a general factoring strategy of first looking for a greatest common factor, uh, then trying, uh, you know, either a difference of squares, uh, difference of cubes, sum of cubes, special formula if you have two terms left, uh, a trinomial factoring for three terms, and a grouping factoring for four. There should have been some videos for these different types of factoring in uh, the previous activity on quadratic equations. Um, but if you have any questions about that, just let me know, uh, or look for a video on the factoring you need. Since we have uh, no greatest common factor here, uh, we can't do a GCF factoring at the start. Um, and since we have three terms, we'll be doing a trinomial uh, factoring. Now, uh, the four and the two might be throwing people off, um, and so what I usually do is I kind of throw out like a, a sidebar thing of, well, what if it was just 
x squared minus 6x plus 1, right? So this is a quadratic trinomial that we would factor um, using the techniques from before. Uh, and using the AC method, we would multiply A and C, which is 9 times 1, which is 9. And then we would look for two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6. Uh, and those two numbers would be negative 3 and negative 3. Right? Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 plus negative 3 is negative 6. And you use those two numbers to split the middle term. Again, this is just one way of doing this factoring. And then we factor by grouping. Common factor with the first pair is 3x. And then the common factor here doesn't look like there is one, but if you write out just negative 3x plus 1, it won't match up with this uh, stuff in parentheses. And so you actually need to factor off a negative 1. Uh, to get those to match up. Remember, these terms in parentheses have to match up uh, because factoring those is the next step. 3x minus 1 is one factor, uh, and then 3x minus 1 is, in fact, the other factor. And from there, we would set each factor equal to 0 and solve and get x equals 1 third, x equals 1 third. So what I want to tell you is that you can use the, pretty much the same process here. It's just your exponents are a little bigger, right? And so let's try it. We would do 9 times 1 is 9. And we would look for two numbers that multiply to positive 9 and add to negative 6. Of course, those would be the same two numbers. But when I split the middle term now, uh, they're not negative 3x and negative 3x. They're now negative 3x squared and negative 3x squared, right? They have to be like terms to match that one. And then I do factoring by grouping. The common factor now is 3x squared instead of 3x. And what's left is 3x squared minus 1. Common factor here is, again, negative 1 and we get 3x squared minus 1. So everything is the same except the x squareds are x to the fourth and the x's are x squareds. And then we factor this, 3x squared minus 1, and then get 3x squared minus 1. Now, when both factors are equal, um, you can just set one of them equal to zero because they're going to give you the same thing. Uh, and we can solve this by a difference of squares, but we can also just use the square root property technique. Um, if you go back to the methodology for solving quadratics, um, that was one of our options there. And so we would add one to both sides. And then we would divide both sides by 3. And then we need to take the square root of both sides. Remember, if we uh, use an even index root, we need a plus or minus. So square and the square root cancel, but this is plus or minus square root of 1 over 3. So there's two solutions here, and I want to jump ahead to the step four, right? The comparing the degree with the number of solutions and the multiplicities. Um, because we're not going to end up finding any imaginary or complex solutions to go along with these. They're, these are the only two solutions, and this is a degree four polynomial. So you might be wondering about that mismatch. Well, these actually have multiplicity too, and that means they're kind of each one counts as two solutions. And so there's two of them, but with multiplicity two, two times two gives you four solutions. So you could think of like, well, there's four solutions, but uh, two of, they're each repeated once. And, and the way that you could tell that is uh, the multiplicity comes from the fact that this is 3x squared minus 1 squared. Right, so the solutions come from this uh, factor appearing more than once. 
Um, and then so this will make more sense when we start looking at polynomial functions and understanding the multiplicities of the intercepts um, because those will be related to this. So, so these two intercepts end up coming from this factor and this factor is squared and so that means they each have multiplicity two. So two plus two gives you four. All right, let's check uh, these two solutions with technology. So switching over to this, so we just go up and we're just gonna get rid of this equation and use nine X to the fourth minus six X squared plus one equals zero. Enter. Uh, and we see this. Now, with the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the top and bottom, and the square root of 1 is 1. So this is equivalent to square root of 1 third and negative square root of 1 third, right? So that's the same thing we got, plus or minus square root of 1 third. It's just a more simplified approach to it. So... So we've got these two solutions, and we're going to now check those. So let's put them, let's start with negative 1 over square root of 3. And let's put that in the calculator. So 9, negative fraction, 1 over second and square is the square root, uh, exponent of 4, minus 6, negative fraction 1 over second square root 3, squared plus 1. All right, so we get 0 equals 0 there. Uh, and then to check the other one, all we're doing is getting rid of those negatives and using positive 1 over square root of 3. So I can go back up here without typing it all in again and just get rid of those negatives by hitting delete there. So get on the negative signs and hit delete. And then you also get 0 equals 0. So we did already compare the degree, which was 4, uh, with these two solutions. So I've got negative 1 over square root of 3, which again counts as two solutions, and positive 1 over square root of 3, which also counts as two solutions. We usually don't write them uh, more than once in the solution set. The solution set is all unique values. so. Uh, with multiplicities, there's technically four solutions, but there's only two unique numbers. All right, and that wraps it up. So uh, that is the methodology for solving polynomial equations. Uh, you're on to the fill-in-the-blanks now.